Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for just gathering us here today. Although we uh, so I'm missing some, we just pray for Patricia, we pray for Maria, we continue to lift them up here as discipleship class, three students, Lord. And I just pray that as we continue to dig deep into revival, into your prophecies, into your your deep and hidden things, things as said in um in the procession to Arrowhead video, Lord, I just pray that you pour out your own energy, pour out your understanding, pour out your revelation, that we may continue to understand your secrets, your deep and hidden things, Lord Jesus. I just pray that you give us the knowledge, give us the wisdom, give us the understanding, give us the revelation to understand you, Lord, and what you are doing at this time, especially in our church, especially in us individually, Lord. So we thank you so much for today. We love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So, okay, I, I guess, um, well, I, Angela already mentioned you did finish, but you, you didn't, I mean, you only have like, it's only for 49 minutes, right? The whole video. And uh, it, it is a procession from where to the sand, wherever they started to the sand. So, Pastor gave us questions. Um, after you watch, uh, how about how about us as foreigners? Discuss, remember, and assess where we are, and can you send where we can you see where we're going and can be going? As D three, how will you lead the way? What do you see? How shall we get there? But let's just uh, go first on what we got from what we heard from that video um I'll, I'll go first um i saw that video like after we came from the sand so it was like oh wow and 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 even listening to it the second time and what bob jones prophesied over um over mike because i mean like that was amazing and very exact <laughs> it is really very exact that uh, and also um and the truman and how the truman how president truman and how he gave the property to to them the my because ministry and and how israel got got in the whole picture at that President Truman was the first, the first, the president, first president to acknowledge Israel. Uh, so that was really amazing, and and how the the dates came together, like so. Um, it it shows really for me um, the, how God is so amazing, and. Um, of course, he'll use the people, but then still, if Mike Bickle didn't obey, this wouldn't happen. So, right? So uh, it's really our obedience, our obedience to people. I mean, he will send us people. He will get into our, and he got into Bob's dreams, sending the angel. And and it, he was even sad that he's not able to, I mean, like he was not able to participate because he won't be because of he will get sick he, he can't won't be able to walk and like anyhow uh, I guess um, he will God will send us what he needs what what his will for us for his people through our dreams through visions and through other people so I guess we really have to be aware. And sensitive to all all these, and not just ignore. You know, we can have a dream, but like one time I dreamt about. I don't usually dream, <laughs> but I dreamt about not not directly to Jeremy, but somebody was telling me about Jeremy. So I I thought it was a warning. So I said, Jeremy, don't do this, and 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 I followed it. So uh, I mean, like it would scare. It scared me. But hey, <laughs> we we don't have the spirit of fear, but those meant something, those are a warning, so that we have to to you know be alert on, on those warnings. And and that's what I 
got on that procession and the art like when they mention the art of of uh, holding the art the procession is also not in earthly but also in the heavenly and how they talk about that and like and uh, also they mention um this prophecy was already done by william seymour a hundred years ago and it was prophesied that it would be more than the Azusa Street Revival. Imagine the Azusa Street Revival was so great, it affected the whole world. Now, this, is, this revival coming will be more than that. I mean, like, it's just exciting to, to think about it. Like, and so for me, like, I don't want to be just on the, sh on the shade or on the side <laughs> when this revival happened. I want to be in the revival, not not in the as the spectator. So I guess we really have to work hard on this. So that, that's what I that's what I got. So yeah. Oops. Well, we we need to be, I guess, engaged mm -hmm. to see the revival because if. If you just want to see the revival and you don't want to partake in the revival, because revival needs to start within us individually, right? It's not like, let me watch revival happen, but then how about you? You're dead. And then, you know, so it really, it, revival needs to start from us individually. And when you were talking about like dreams, I guess it can go like in the extremes. There's the people that will have dreams and will ignore like you're saying, but mm -hmm. you need to be uh, no, uh, aware and you know, heed the promptings or whatever the dream you had. And then you have the other extreme where they dream a lot and they overinterpret things. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And so like, that's why we need to lean into the Holy Spirit and really ask about these dreams because, like I said, like there are those people that will not take heed and not are not cognizant, and then there's those extremes that they take it really like to the extremes, like in, and then it can be like misinterpreted. Um, but I think like you're talking about the procession, so. Um, I think for that to like happen is because there were people that were contending, contending, yeah. right? Like Mike Bickle and them, like Lou Ingle. And um, the prophecy was spoken. So, I mean, even for us, like now, and I think I'm going to kind of touch that. So like for, for both um, parts, like for us, and then for like this with what happened in the, the Kansas City sent that it was prophesied and so now it's coming into fulfillment because people contended oh. that they they really contended they really prayed fasted to see it come to pass and so in the same way for us like there are prophecies like for us like as a church uh, like say for instance like San Francisco right seven years but are we gonna be committed to contend for yeah. that seven in that seven years to see that prophecy come into fulfillment, to see lives transform and re San Francisco revive, right? And so in the same way, like we need to contend in the same way these people have contended and are still contending to see that revival happen. Um, so I guess I'm answering both. Yeah, questions because <laughs> yeah th that's it like the contending like people contended and so in the same way for us what what do i see where we remember and assess where we are and can you see where we are going and so yes we we i think we don't really know the full picture of where we are seeing like uh, like a good example is the san francisco seven years right but we just need to contend really um, and, you know, I mean, we all talk about this, like individually, just communion, communing with God, abiding in God and really having that desire and yearning to be revived first, us, me individually, and then see that revival happen in my life. And then others are affected because they see my life revive. And so they are also affected. And so, yeah, I think that's the one word, content for both 
parts, the sand, and then like w- for us, like where we see us going. Okay. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah, I just honestly, when uh, as they were talking about their the prophecies and even how uh, Bob Jones kind of, I think where he asked, uh, show this prophecy to Mike Bickle. And even for Mike Bickle, he had, he like still had to have this time of inquiring of God about it, um, really going to him and seeing like, because even he himself, like he, it took him so a while for him to like really wrap his brain around it. And I think um, to go from that, uh, kind of just how God kind of speaks to fellow believers and kind of through that connects them where uh, I think it's as many times in the Bible, he kind of shows how the angel of the Lord will be sent to somebody and it'll be sent to somebody else, somebody in a completely different city. And they will just kind of meet. And from there, God opens doors of like the conversations and like, there's really nothing else we need to do, but just obey and just be in obedience to uh, the word of the Lord. And even when uh, I forgot when, when Jesus was coming to the crowd where, but he asked the two disciples to go get a donkey and the healer said, go get it, just go get it. And the two went and they, they just got it. They, they didn't like kind of question of, Oh, like, what are we going to say to these people that own the donkey or whatever? But when they went and obeyed, God just kind of opened that door for them to just kind of receive that donkey. And I think it's so, I guess, amazing how even Lou Engel, I think his, uh, cause he was part of that kind of Azusa now, um, revival way, way back then. And that was like one of the first, I guess, kind of events like this that I ever attended. And I remember just kind of listening to that. And even his story behind that was, was just so like powerful where he really sold just everything. And he, he sold everything for the stadium for, to like really, uh, not to, I guess, really to pursue this prophecy that, that God given, gave him. And I remember him like just saying like only a United, only a United church can heal a divided nation. And for me until this day, that, that really just stuck to me and like really touched my heart about it. But to go uh, back to like these prophecies that God is giving these people, um, I just find it so amazing that, and to go with also about really contending, the also faith that it actually requires. Um, I think Bob Jones, going to Bob Jones, and he would always say, oh, it's July 3rd, 3rd July 3rd. It's going to be this year. It's going to be this year. It's going to be this year. And when it didn't happen, how much more, you know, faith to like continue pursue, like, and believe that, you know, it is going to be July 3rd, although he doesn't know when it is going to happen because God gave it to them. And um, I guess going back to us when at the Mara, how she talked about the seven years, you know, when we do keep continuously go to San Francisco quarterly and, you know, if we don't see, like, I guess this time, if we don't see anything happen, like, where will we be? Will we continue to contend? Will we continue to have faith in this? Because it was given to uh, to Pastora and she kind of spoke to us about that. So, of course, like, we're going to have to continue to go to God, continue to trust him, continue to have faith in him that, you know, these things that is prophesied upon us and that we are assigned to, we just need to have faith and obey his that calling. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I also uh, really agree with what um, you all said, especially regarding, you know, having faith and contending with with what's happening right now in these times, because, you know, especially uh, it says here in, in the post that, you know, Pastor Alenda said, uh, as we talk about how words spoken in the past can happen, if we, the church will contend for its fulfillment, I think it really goes to show that there's a lot of things spoken. Um, and yet, you know, um, those things will not come to pass unless we, as the church, you know, contend for it. And something that that really also kind of uh, convicted me was in this post that Pastor posted also, where, you know, Mike Bickle said, I cried. Yes. He said, you have only said yes, but have not done it, d- done it, done it yet. Many have said yes, but did not fa- do it for decades. He said, beware, lest your brethren steal these from your heart. And I think it's so important, especially us as, as foreigners for Christ, um, especially when, whenever we've been talking about being a foreigner and also with San Francisco and all these different things, you know, I feel like as I've also reflected 
reflected on myself, you know, and even in the sand, they also talked about, you know, how many people have said yes, and yet they have not, you know, really followed up with that commitment in their hearts. And I feel like that's something that Pastora really, and God, uh, and most especially really wants us to enter as a church, you know, to really act upon what we say, uh, to really act upon these 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 uh, these things that are being said uh, because you know as we talked about and, and as we've seen in the video the things that have been said did come into fulfillment and you know the thing that they're doing right now is a fulfillment of, of what is of what has been prophesied right and I remember in the video Lou Ingle said that yes this procession that, that this uh, procession from you know uh, from this place to descend is also uh, happening you know in the heavenly realm and I think you know understanding that what we do in this in, in this in this realm can also affect the spiritual realm uh, really goes to show just how important our actions are uh, because if we do not act upon these prophecies if we do not act upon these 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 things that are being said you know uh we as a church you know cannot really see those things come into fulfillment and so just being able to to take action you know being able to take action is a form of our contending being able to take action is a form of our faith right and so when we as a church do not act out and when we as a church do not have uh, the heart to contend and and especially have the heart to not act you know then then the plan and the work of god you know uh, will not really come into fulfillment to the things that he's showing us and revealing to us. And so for me, you know, uh, watching this video and, and seeing uh, what, where we, as, we, where we are as a church, you know, I feel like God is really, uh, really encouraging us to be in a place uh, uh, and to be a people of action, to be a people of, of acting in faith, because, you know, that's how we really contend for these things that are, that are happening. Uh, so that's just something that, that I, I wanted to share. Um, also, I want to add um, in regards to San Francisco, our first two trips, like it was disappointing because the 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 because <laughs> they, they didn't really catch the vision that uh, Pastor had and we had. So if we stop on that, then uh, this what, what if we think okay we have we will revive we'll stand on that prophecy we will revive um, San Francisco then. That's not going to happen in the same manner the the group of Mike Bickle uh, endured and persevered for this to happen. So, yes, I was just thinking, oh, my goodness, those two trips inside and bringing all those instruments. Oh, my goodness. And, and like, what are they doing? Like, just the fact that, you know, all this, but we, we don't, we cannot think that way. <laughs> So, so yeah, it just, well, the, the YGs endured and persevered more <laughs> than I did. So, so yeah, the, the importance of obeying and also, you know, following through what, what, what the, what we obeyed. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but also about those first two trips is really our test of our faith. Our, yes. Not only like faith, like you're gonna you know obey because god says this but also our faithfulness in our serving right because i mean we brought all of those things and it's a test of our faithfulness and serving in our attitude because are you gonna complain because <laughs> we're bringing all these things you know it's it's really like a test for us individually more. starting with us really more yeah for us than them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah it is so yeah so, because yeah, and- like, uh, like uh, as you, you mentioned, then it brought me to, well, yes, I gave you this task. Let me see if you can deal with this big task. If you have exactly. this, this little, you know, disappointments yep. Yep. <laughs> or, or, or downs, <laughs> yep. and- I really give you this task. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so. uh, also, I, I want to read kind of the post Pastor made kind of before that where uh, kind of t- entitled Revival or We Die. And then he was he was uh, quoting like John Knox who said, give me Scotland or I die. George Whitefield, give me souls or take my souls. And then she continued to say, today tens, tens of millions of American Christians need to pray, God, give us revival or we die. And I saw that and I was like, man, that's actually just insane. And then uh, it talks about kind of, where we honestly, where we as uh, Christians, as believers, need to position ourselves in this like desperateness for not just you know San Francisco, not just 
these things, but really for his children, his people, the nations. And um, I want to go back to like Angelo, what he did um, kind of for the Sen, because I think that's honestly so amazing. And uh, <laughs> Angelo, I just love you for that. Uh, when he like really just gave up his entire um, that semester of, because it's a final, he was giving up a final and to fail a final, like literally is, is honestly your, your whole, whole grade, right, Angelo? Yeah. So um, yeah, going from that, like that, seeing that for me, I kind of see that's just the start. There's going to be so much more like kind of required of us, so much more like, you know, not just fate, not just trust, but really giving up ourselves for revival, for, you know, for San Francisco, for the nations. And like seeing that, I guess, I don't know if it's like prophetically, but where are we going? Where are we right now? Like how are willing are we to like really give and so into revival for San Francisco? Like how much are we like willing to like give ourselves up? Like how we, like the, you guys uh, mentioned about the first two and how like we were tested, we were like went through these trials of, you know, bringing all our luggage, bringing all our um, equipment, pretty much our whole church, bringing that there, like, and yes, uh, we're, I guess, not really in that situation right now. But even if we were, like, how would we be? Would we still continue to sow into it? Will we continue, still continue, like, bring everything just for San Francisco? And even if we see it or not, you know, throughout these seven years, and also, like, continue to believe that we will see it, and then not really focusing on the progression of the people, but, like, just believing God, you will really move in this in this city you will really move in these people and i will give like give it all for it so i just wanted to read that because i saw that in this. well we we have to go right because your mom is going to buy her van and then we also have the van so we we don't have we have to go <laughs> there's no more other a choice <laughs> that's the commitment we have to go <laughs> there be no excuse we have the place we have the accommodation we have our transportation so <laughs> exactly there's no more excuse so yes i'm excited <laughs> uh, not just for san francisco and like starting with the sand like i mean like Oh, who, who, I mean, when, when Pastor mentioned about the sin, I said, oh, okay. I mean, like, I wasn't even planning to go, but then, <laughs> okay. I was going to set it aside. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I, yeah, there was that prompting. So, I mean, see what I would miss if I didn't go. I mean, yeah. I wanted to share, I know, um, because a few years ago, when um, we met Pastor, when we started a church here in Torrance, before we we like went to LA Echo Park, yeah, we had um, a small church here in Torrance. That's where we started, you know, having the night service. So, because Pastor would go to LA, and then in the afternoon she would have here in Torrance. And um, <clears throat> in one of the uh, Sunday night service, there was this one homeless guy that. You know, you know, Pastor, she likes to like adopt people and then she would take them to the hotels. Ganyan. And so there was this one homeless guy that she would check him into a hotel, like, you know, once a night, ganyan, t- twice a night. And then, um, you know, he would take a shower there. Ganyan. And then he would come to church on Sunday. And then there was this one Sunday when we were just like worshiping. And then all of a sudden, like he was just filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he started prophesying over each and every person. It was crazy. But um, so when he was he was prophesying, he prophesied over me. And, you know, it was really like it was a powerful like like night, I would say. And in that in that night, I what he prophesied over me, basically, he, he was saying that, oh, you will go to the to the nations and be worshiping and praying. And I'm like, how is that going to happen? This is this is like literally like he was saying all these things and he said you will be with you know Linda ganyan ganyan like you know he was saying all those things. Um, so that was 
I don't remember remember the year, but that was before Echo Park. And so now I wrote that in my journal. I have it in my journal. Fast forward 2018, that's when we started going to the nations. And so it reminded me, you know, God reminded me like, this is the prophecy. But it's weird though, because I mean, maybe someone was praying for us contending like it, this will happen. Or, you know, maybe it was really meant for it to happen. But, you know, when that guy like prophesied over us like that was like on point when it happened in 2018 when we started going to the nations and then you know what the first one was what israel i think was the first trip right and we were worshiping we were praying so i was like wow this is like a fulfillment of that prophecy that was spoken over to us with that that guy and after that night like he disappeared meaning like we haven't we didn't see him anymore so it was like god it was like god sent you know yeah it was it was crazy i remember that so yeah um i just wanted to share that as far as like when a uh, prophecy was i mean as prophecy is spoken i mean like with the sand it's it's a totally different story because people were contending but for us like i mean i was like okay but then it it came to pass you know so yeah i just wanted to share that because you know many of us like when um when even when you know uh pastors or preachers or teachers are preaching or teaching they could be prophesying over your lives right and so if you receive that and really take hold of it and maybe you know pray for for it that god you know i want to see this come into fulfillment in my life like it will come to pass and so yeah i just wanted to share that that prophecy that was yeah it it was it was it was crazy that was a crazy like moment. Yeah. I think also Mike Miko mentioned that was weird <laughs> <laughs> when he was prophesied on by Bob Jones. That was weird. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So mm, expect weirdness in our life. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so that's why our obedience, right? Like and really leaning on the Holy Spirit because it's weird, but okay, if this is what you want, God, then okay, we'll go for it <laughs> uh, instead of resisting. So, yeah. Yeah, instead of resisting because it's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I guess also, like, ultimately, like, say, for instance, like with Pastor, right? Like, it, you know, how she got so excited because seven years that means she's guaranteed seven <laughs> i mean that's what she says right but also i guess like because she has that relationship with god and so like just trusting in what god says so okay like we'll just do and so that's why i guess you know we're exhorted on doing the matthew 22 37 42 just you know having that intimate relationship with god just so when we hear god's voice we don't question him we just go for it yeah, um, I was just uh, it dawned on me like when we when I started Forerunners for Christ, then now where are we at? Then where will we be? I mean, like corporately, not just for me individually, but as a body of Christ, especially the unity of the body of Christ needs to be re is really important because so, like. If one is rebellious, then it, it's we're gonna be cut <laughs> short of the glory of God. So we need that unity. I mean, we as a church, like small as we are, can you imagine the whole body of Christ uh, would be united? I mean, like nobody can stop uh, the, the enemy cannot stop uh, the body of Christ of uh, what's gonna be happening. What's been prospered? prophesied to happen so yes mm. yeah I, I just wanted to share something because uh Italita shared something about unity and i think it also goes back to uh, the contending because as a, as a body of christ when we are not 
one in in the spirit when we are not in like according acting according to the same purposes of god you know it's hard as a body of christ to contend it's hard as a body of christ uh, to be faithful and obedient to what god is doing and saying and so um i remember you know uh, tita myra always especially telling us as a worship team that it's so important for us to be one with the spirit because when we are one with the spirit then we are one together as a body of christ and as a body of christ then we can have unity in our contending we can have unity in our obedience and faithfulness because you know Know, especially i saw that unity you know in our first trip to san francisco you know about no one murmuring no one complaining and everything you know even though the enemy may have tried to attack everything went what went well you know and you know it really goes to show just how like what the list said just how powerful we are as a body of christ when we are in according to one mind one spirit and one truth and you know um going into san francisco and like all these different prophecies and 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 all these different declarations that are being made as a body of christ it's so important for us to you know ask the holy spirit you know to to understand these things because as a body of christ we will contend as a body of christ we will remain faithful as a body of christ we will be obedient to these things that are being said but it is really hard to do that unless you know we are one um in the spirit and so that's just something that yeah i want to share definitely important to be one in the spirit because if you're not there there isn't going to be unity i mean jesus prays for that for the body of christ to be one just as he is one with the father and so that's why individually it's important that we abide in god because let me tell you it's really impossible to be united with your brothers and your sisters if you're not you yourself is not united with god I mean, that's the only way you can be united, have the one spirit, because when you're united, you're abiding in God, God speaks to you, right? And so when you speak to your brother and your sister, and they are also abiding in God, God speaks to them the same thing. And there's agreement instead of disagreement. And so that's why it's very important that we individually always is abiding in God. And then obviously from there, we expect the unity of the body of Christ to be there. And I think like also it's humility. I mean, Sister Lilita, she always mentions this. The, it's the humility because if we have a little, just even a little, a tad bit of pride, there wouldn't be any unity. You know, imagine like, just say for instance, like us in our worship team, like say for instance, like if I correct you and you're still offended, then we have a problem, you know, there's still pride in you if you're offended. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, just being humble and really unite, like individually us in union with the Holy Spirit, in union with Jesus is very important for the body of Christ to be one. And I mean, Paul prays that, you know, God grant them to be like-minded towards one another so that with one mind, one spirit, one heart, Father God may be glorified through us. So I was just oh. reminded on uh, on uh, <laughs> was uh, Amil's uh, worship the vertical and the horizontal worship that work together the same manner vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship. <laughs> okay, Jeremy. I just wanted to comment on like uh, what Angelo and Atamar are saying about uh, the. Uh, uh, not just abiding in God, but being of one spirit. Because uh, I think that whenever like those, like we see those, like we actually physically see those moments kind of happen. For me, it personally like makes me just so happy. Uh, like I think I talked to you, Atamara and Angelo as well about, and even my mom about it, where, you know, there's this nudging of the of God, nudging of the Holy Spirit. And when one of us kind of like just responds and like, oh, I was thinking the same thing. And yeah, those, just those little moments make me really happy. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> so. Like, remember this one time during worship? I mean, it happened twice, I think, already when Angela was doing worship. And then I was in the back and I was going to get the mic. And then, like, I wasn't able to say what I was going to say because Angela closed the worship. And then, <laughs> and then the message came on. And I'm like, that's the exact same thing I was going to say after worship. But then Angela closed it. <laughs> and then the second time happened again. And then I, Jeremy's like looking at me like you're too slow. That's why Angela's always calling on you. <laughs> but yeah, like I would tell them like this is the same exact thing I was gonna do, but Angela closed the worship. 
but yeah like you you get excited right because yeah. like oh wow like it's the same thing same spirit so yeah yeah like uh i exhorted then then the, the song comes what real exhorted the next i said like whoa i mean like we didn't even spoke yeah. about it and like oh so, exactly so yeah manifestation <laughs> yep I, I, I want to see that more with the worship team I, and not only just like like worship in songs and exhorting like verses or prayers, but even like, you know, those menial tasks that we do, like, I mean, you know, I asked you guys for your feedback on what happened on Sunday, like those things, right? Like I'm not there, but like I expect people to just step up and like, like see what, what are we lacking? What do we need to do? You know, like I don't need to always direct you guys and tell you guys what to do because every Sunday we do that like who was I telling this but during the set remember when they changed sets it's like they know exactly what to do and these are different groups and they know exactly like 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 they're, they're so I think I was talking to Kim like they're so fluid in like their movements like you don't someone is speaking and they're like just moving instruments and then like they just know what to do and I, I want to see us like grow in that place where i we don't need to tell you like what to do even if you're not media but if you see something's lacking in media like speak up and say something or like the tablecloth is moving like we gotta fix it but we can't fix it on the spot because someone's preaching like what can we do to fix it like those things you know like i don't know i'm just ocd so i see those things but still like i'm watching and so other people if i see it then that means whoever is watching online can see it also but um not only that that i'm home because i was watching online but what about in person if you see it like what are you gonna do are you gonna be brave and courageous to like go up there and fix you know i mean i saw angela fix it but it wasn't enough to <laughs> hold it down. But, you know, like those things, like, I mean, even those menial things is worship to God. It's not because you're singing and you're praying verses, like that's the only worship. No, like every single thing, our thoughtfulness is worship to God. If you're thoughtless, oh, okay. thoughtless. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially those little things that we don't, we think it, that it won't matter because we overlook those. Yeah. 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 Those are the ones that, that matters to him. Yeah. We, we can't be, you know, with the little things, well, but then we can't be given the big things. Big things, yeah. Matter. Yep. If you're faithful in small things, then you can be faithful also in big things. I don't know. For some reason, I'm preaching to you guys already. <laughs> but that's I. That's just my thought process. Like as far as uh, us, like especially us worship team, because oh, in this, I don't know. I don't remember what event, but um, these worship team before they went on stage, they were they were uh, taking tickets because they were ushering or something oh, like that. Uh, Mario Morello. Was that the one? Okay, yeah. And I was like, look at them. Like, you know, they, they're not just on stage. Oh, even on the IHOP. Sister Lilita, right? The prayer. Yeah. Like one they was ushering. ushering. Yeah. And the Sister Lilita was like, oh, that's the guy that was ushering. Now he's up on the stage. And, you know, it's like, I mean, that's, that's their worship to God. And so, like, for us in the same way, like, not because you're just... I mean, not just, but you're the guitarist or you're the, the main vocals. Like, that's all you're going to do. Like, no, like, there's other things that we can do, especially for us. We're a small church. So we need to be, like, uh, doing everything. <laughs> One person is doing everything, not just, like, yeah, not just, like, on your own own spot. But I'm not only talking about you guys, like, YGs, but even the adults, too, you know, like, if we see some some need in some areas, like we just step up. We don't need to be called out or we don't need to be asked, like go throw away the trash, Jeremy, or, you know, things like that, you know? That's just my thought process. I don't know why we got there, but I guess it's part of, like I said, it's part of worship, everything we do. I like uh, when we were in, in Kansas, in the hotel, the hotel uh, I was talking to Amiya. Amiya, there's uh, a cup fell. So let's see who's going to pick that up. We're just uh, like, the three girls were right in front of that cup, but they didn't see it. 
until one man picked it up. <laughs> it was just, you know, that that little thing, like, do you do we care? I mean, like, God honors that, you know, that little thing. <laughs> so those those little menial tasks. <laughs> I mean, but, and everything we do, God honors. <laughs> but what I also actually observe on like those things is that because they're not paying attention. Mm. That's why, I mean, not just that specific uh, example you just gave, but in general, because they're not paying attention. So they don't see the need of, of doing this or doing that. And thought, you know, thoughtfulness. Mm. Of course, individually and corporately, we ascended, but we, there's still more. <laughs> as as like because that no, you don't. Uh, you still have to reach out, and if all well, you reach out again, <laughs> corporately, we we learn a lot, but still have to learn a lot more. <laughs> We're happy, but we could be more happy. <laughs> I mean, especially with him up there, he's happy, but he could be happier. <laughs> we can end, I guess, unless. Anyone else needs to say something more? Okay. Well, thank you, Lord, for um, for your presence today because it was your, it is your promise that if two or three are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we know we have learned, but there's still a lot more to learn. So, yes, Father, give us the perseverance and endurance to continue on what you have started in us individually and in our church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah.